what does um <coughs> excuse me what does mythology mean uh to you ashley any any thoughts about that um i guess uh origin tales people trying to make sense of the world or trying to provide guidance for people throughout time that mm -hmm. tends to be a thing that happens uh, and often societies kind of have been shaped by these myths and these stories as well. So, but also, I guess to me, particularly for my story, it means, it means culture. Um, and yeah, it means having something that is a, a part of your, your journey, your, your heritage. Fantastic. Uh, Tamsin, any, any thoughts about that? Oh, similar. For me, mythology kind of anchors you in a place and gives you a sense, not just of the hills and the landscape and the people, but the, the sort of larger possibility and magic and history of stories that exist there fantastic it kind of links you doesn't it i think that's the thing it kind of yeah. links you to your your country the people the, the, and all the way back you know it's kind of and it's in us isn't it it's amazing um lucy any, any other thoughts about that for you yeah it does it does link us and i think it links it links cultures as well because so many yeah. of these stories are universal cultures different cultures have their own versions of them i i like to think of mythology as um just brilliant old stories they're just they're just brilliant brilliant old stories a bit monstrous a bit magical but the fact that they're still around is incredibly important because it means that each generation has 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 read it and gone this is fantastic or has or has heard it and said this is brilliant i'm going to pass this on i'm going to pass this on to the next generation and that shows us that you know there's something in it isn't there? there there must be something in these old stories the fact they're still around there's something in them that connects with us uh, ash any thoughts uh, uh, from you about that i think you can be good lisa as well like this idea that there's um a resonant truth that these stories have been told and then they've been retold over time. Um, but also I, I agree with you know, Tamsin and Ashley that there is a, uh, a touch of the sacred about these stories, usually, I think, that separates them from the stories that we might tell each other in the playground. When you first started writing to get in things published, you know, has mythology influenced your writing kind of process from that moment right up until these the books you're currently publishing now um in that sense uh ashley any any thoughts on that the simple answer is just yes it has definitely <laughs> um because i've always been a mythology buff ever since i was a child really um and in that video we kind of touched upon kind of archetypes and i'd say the quest story is one that has fascinated me since i was younger and uh yeah a lot of my middle grade writing and and as such, a lot of my writing as a child was around these wild adventures um, with these core hero or heroes. Uh, and that's continued to kind of feed uh, the kind of adventures that I write. Fantastic. Uh, Tamsin? Definitely. Um, when I started with the Weather Weaver series, it was very much grounded in the mythology that I'd grown up with, which was um, Shetland. There's lots of myths and legends that are very specific to Shetland. I mean, they've got universal elements to them as well. but but it was that mythology and those stories that I've been told lots of different times when I was small that really fed my imagination. I found it also really exciting that you can hear the same story from different people and it'll be slightly different each time, but the heart of it is still the same. It means so much to us, and it? It comes, part of this, it comes part of your being and, and everything. Um, Lucy. Yeah, definitely. Although, although my story, I would say my stories are, they're not fantasy, they're not set in a fantasy or mythological world. So my stories are very much set in the real world. What I like to do then is to is to add in this, this supernatural mythical ingredient. Um, and so that we get this lovely kind of tension between the real world and, and this and this magical, this, this, the magical happenings as well, which gives us that lovely kind of goosebumpy, shivery, is it really happening kind of kind of a feeling. Um, but I think, I think, I often think of stories as being a bit like a bit bit like a sort of a witch's brew. So you're kind of adding in all these different ingredients until until you get something magic happening. Um, and for me, uh, adding in that little, that little bit of, of mythology is is often what what makes the magic happen. Absolutely. And, and finally, Ash, for, for this question. I love that witch's brew. <laughs> <laughs> um, I know it's great. Okay. Cool. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I think stories in uh, mythology are pretty much how I set, make sense of the world, I think, ever since I was a little girl. Um, yeah, I mean, I uh, I study myth for my PhD at the moment. Um, I, I, I teach myth at Bristol University. And um, so, I, yeah, I, I think it, it, it makes a, a beautiful kind of sense. It would ripple through everything, everything that I write. And I have a 
tried occasionally to write something else, but it always it always, always comes back. <laughs> comes right. back yeah. So, uh, clip us. Church of England Primary School, Liverpool. What is your favourite myth or legend? If you have one, or legend. I should have thought about this before I came on. Now, really, um, <laughs> uh, I'm going to go for. Um, I, I love the whole Trojan War arc. So I'm, I'm gonna, yeah, I'm gonna say uh, the Trojan War period. A nice, nice light myth. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, Tamsin, let's go, Tamsin. Let's go. Okay. Oh, my favourite myth is the Selkies. So shapeshifters who can exist oh, yeah. in two different worlds. Yeah. Well, that's good, uh, Lucy. Yeah, I th I'm I'm very drawn to the mythical beings that are that are sort of part of nature or symbolic of a part of nature. So in this one, we've got the sort of a, a water spirit, but particularly also the Minotaur, who features in my previous Barrington Stoke, but the Storm and the Minotaur. And I'm really interested in monsters or characters that we perceive to be monsters and actually looking at the, the other side of them or seeing them in a more vulnerable way. Yeah, and yeah. I was really interested in the fact that the Minotaur when the Minotaur was originally imprisoned in the labyrinth, that he was a child. And if we start thinking of him in that way, then he becomes a, a victim of the story too. So yeah, that's that really the flip side, yeah. Yeah, yeah, uh, and Ash? Yeah, I would agree. I think there's something really special about hearing a story retold, so you can mm -hmm. hear the other side of it. Um, Oh, to choose a favourite myth is very, very difficult. But I think, yeah, I, oh gosh. I, I mean, transformation stories. So I'm a big fan of um, Ovid's Metamorphoses. So the, the stories of, of transformation, but I'm always interested in the, yeah, in the women in those stories. Yeah, yeah. Uh, St. Paul's Catholic Primary School in Durham. What inspired you to write this particular story? Um, I suppose we can answer that bit when we come to speaking to you uh, individually, I think, possibly. But how did your personal experiences or beliefs influence the themes and characters in your book? I, I'll, I'll answer it quite in you know, a quite short and snappy way, hopefully, yeah. which is, um, I think, one of the most important um, beliefs that I have in life is that I think I try and be curious. I suppose I really, really try and be curious in everything that I do. So I, um, I try and have a lot of adventures. I'm quite low key adventures often, but I do try and be curious and open doors and sort of ask questions that maybe I'm not supposed to. Um, and really that was at the heart of the story, um, the importance of curiosity and the bravery that it takes to ask a question that maybe is a bit uncomfortable or to say things that maybe shouldn't be said or some other people think shouldn't be said out loud in certain situations. Fantastic, okay, Lucy. Yeah. So I think so. The River Spirit is part of a, um, a, a trilogy. So three books I've done for Barrington Stoke that are all about uh, child labour in the Victorian period. So we've got um, uh, the Mermaid in the Mill Pond, which is about a girl working in a cotton mill. The Storm and the Minotaur is about a little boy working in a coal mine, and then the, the new one, The River Spirit, which is about chimney sweeps. Mm. And um, for me, it's a, what I what I wanted to do is to bring um, history and mythology together to kind of explore and expose what what was what was happening in this time and i just think um it, it's it, there are some very very dark and, and unsettling things obviously when you start talking about about this this period in time and what what some children um what some children's lives were like at this time and i suppose it's i my my personal belief here is um that i think we mustn't forget like we mustn't forget some of the some of the darkest times that that we've been through, and we must learn less. We must try to learn lessons from them. Um, and I try to bring all that together in a way that's kind of magical and, and hopeful. Fantastic, uh, Tamsin. Oh, I think it is the belief that actually the stories that we tell ourselves are really important. So not just the stories that we read or the stories that we've grown up with or watch on TV, but the the way that we talk to ourselves. It's about discovering what kind of story you want to be existing in and how how you might dream that up. <laughs> well, I think that's, that's that's brilliant. I mean, I think that's the thing. I think that's the thing with all these with your stories, but all the, all these stories. Why it's why we read, isn't it? It's why we watch things. It's why we participate in stories. Is because we're trying to find echoes of our own story and kind of link to that wider kind of experience. Um, finally, Ashley, for this question. Yeah, and it's a great question as well. Um, I'd say at the heart of the boy to beat the gods is um, looking at the world around you, seeing things that are wrong with it or challenging the status quo. So Kerida lives in this world where these malevolent gods basically travel around the land, taking whatever they want from mere mortals. And uh, the humans are just, you know, they're, they're too, 
too uh, too shocked and too saddened by their losses and too frightened to go up against them. It takes one boy to say, if we band together and challenge them, we can we can go against them. We can stop this madness. So um, it's about people, the power of people basically coming together to challenge something that they see that is wrong. So that is the kind of core belief I think that's at the heart of my book. King Primary School, what is your favorite mythological beast? Here we go, Ash Ashley Thorpe. Favorite mythological beast? Oh. Um, Cerberus. Cerberus. Okay, yes. great. Tanzin? I don't know. Cerberus was my one, damn it. Cerberus is his sister. I love Cerberus. Yeah, that's right. Uh, Lucy? Um, yeah, I'm going to go Minotaur or maybe Medusa because I think she's fascinating. Oh, yeah, she's yeah, cool. brilliant. Yeah. And Ash, what about yourself? I think the word beast, I think I'd go for the beast of Bodmin Moor. Like the oh, yeah. answer, but maybe be stalking the, um, yes, the moors around Agreed. Cornwall. Web Academy Hartlepool. It's often said that in books we find ourselves. Would you agree? And if so, why do you think this is? Yeah, I mean, as a writer, you're, you're putting your soul into the story that you write. But in the same flip side of the coin, as a reader, you trying to search for something that resonates with you as a person as well. So um, that kind of adage that um, once a story is freed, it's no longer the authors, it's the readers. So yeah, there'll be things that resonate with you or that you're searching for that can help you. Like it's about the human condition, isn't it really? Yeah. So that's that's the heart of it. Fantastic, our time's in. I think Ashley summed it up really beautifully, but yeah, it's what you were saying about what makes myths powerful is those pieces of the story that resonate and that are true to all of us. Mm. Um, absolutely, absolutely. That's what, lovely. That's yeah, true to all of us. Yeah. Uh, Lucy. Yeah, I, I I agree. I think um you could say perhaps that's why it's why reading is is such a wonderful and magical thing when we when we when we read a book and we and we feel as if it's been written just for us. Yes. And we hold it to our heart. And it is a that is a, a an incredible and, and a magical thing. And I would also say that there has never been a better time in the world of children's literature. I think that in, in, in the entire history of human civilization, we have such breadth, such glorious diversity in children's books now that that every that everyone can find themselves in a book. Everyone can find that that feeling of this, yeah. this book. This book is just for me. And it's such a it's such a, a, a special and wonderful thing. It's wonderful. But it's wonderful. You you do that sort of you know. Oh, that, oh that's why I feel like that. Yeah. And also, yeah. And also yeah. you know what? Other people have felt like this. Yeah. Like a lot yeah. of other people for thousands of years have felt like this. So I think that's kind of what's wonderful about. It. Uh, finally, uh, Ash, uh, over to yourself. Maybe we link it back to what you were saying, Mr. Lee, about archetypes. Hmm. So um, it's quite a complicated word, isn't it? But sometimes yeah. I think about archetypes as. Um, these almost like these creatures underneath the water. You imagine like the water being your collective imagination, the world. And then everyone's on their little boats on this big ocean and looking, looking into the water and going, oh, I, so, I, I think that, I think that looks like this and I think that looks like this. Yeah. And I wonder when um, we spot an archetype and we're reading, and we're like, oh, I think somebody looks at that the same as me. Somebody looks in the water and sees that big idea the same way that I see that big idea. And then it makes you feel a little bit less alone. Wonderful. That's, that's a wonderful think, analogy um, as well. Sorry, Lucia. No, no, I was just gonna say, and it's, that's, that's, that's absolutely gorgeous. And I think it's also, um, it's also to do, it's the, it's the ideas as well. It's not just characters, it's, it's, it's mm -hmm. ideas. So these, 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 you know, the themes, these big, big ideas in the story um, and the, um, when I when I talk to children about about making their own stories, planning their own stories, um, I think often we think about plot, we think about character, we think about setting. But what I think what's going to elevate your story, what's going to make it into something special that a reader can really connect with, is if you think about what big idea do I want to be at the at the heart of this? You know, is it going to be a story about friendship or hope or, or family or overcoming fear, that sort mm. of thing? And once you've got once you've once you've got that, that I think is gonna is gonna really help you to create a very special story that other people that other people will find special too. That's wonderful advice in terms of writing as well. Thanks very much, all of you.